At the start of the outbreak, before we were all confined to our houses, I took one last trip into Wales to shoot a couple of videos. This is the final one from that day, but as the trip begins, I'm already having problems. At the end of the last video, I said I was going to try and go to the Brecon Beacons, to the Black Mountain Pass. Well, I made it to the Black Mountain Pass. It is absolutely gorgeous out there. It's one of those pastel days the only way I can explain it. The light is just all of these shades of pastel colours, it's beautiful. Desperate to take a photo, and I can't. Because the wind out there is so bad. The chance of me being able to put my camera on a tripod and keep it steady in this weather, in this wind, alone, is is vast, <laughs> vastly, it's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. Um, but the bigger problem is me, and I'm not coping well with the wind. Partly because this will just fly off if I'm not careful. I've had to, I've just walked down the, the road very briefly to see if there was a composition I could see not too distant from the car, because I don't want to be out too, <laughs> too much of this. Um, and there isn't, because uh, I, I can't not hold my hat on my head like that. And when you're you know, if you're trying to steady a camera with one hand, you've got a hat with the other, and it's just going to be too uh, much, especially if I'm trying to record a video for you guys. It's not going to happen. Um, so I'm going to try something a bit different. And I'm going to try and find a vantage point where I can look at the sun through a window. And a little further down the road, I found a place where I could pull over and get the shot that I wanted. Now you see, I think I've been quite clever here because I've got the camera set up in a way uh, that means that I'm going to be able to see. Um, I'm just trying to take a video at the moment. So what I've done is I've got the camera set up and I've, I, I'm inside the car, pointing out of the window, looking at this scene, which is a brilliant scene. And uh, I I'm just trying to figure out what I want to do com composition wise. I think I've got the composition pretty much spot on. I've managed to do this uh, purely by um, putting th my uh, my car through the, 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 the my car in the right position and my camera through the window. That's it. There's no other way I would have been able to do this because the wind that you can't hear right now is buffeting against this side of the car. So the only way to keep the camera as still as possible, as stationary as possible, is to do it using this. Now, I'm going to have to take uh, a, a few uh, different shots here. So if I put it back into this mode, I'm going to put the bracketing on. What's really difficult is that I don't know how many um, images it's going to take right now. So I'm going to try one and see what happens. And the other thing I'm going to have to do is to switch this on to uh, wait, there we go. Timer mode. There we go. Okay. Focusing on the, on the, on the far distance, basically, and then pressing the button and we're going to get a car in shot. May not matter. Okay, so that was too dark, but that was kind of expected from what I had on. I had F10 at the moment, I'm on ISO 320, and I'm on 1 uh, 6, 640. Hopefully, I've got this on manual, because I should have had it on manual all the time. Whoa, what's that do? All right, I've got it on something I didn't want to put it on. Right, I'm definitely on manual. Okay, so we're going to put the, we're going to start changing some of the settings on here. The ISO is going to go down to uh, what I usually put it on, which is fiftieth. Uh, the F number is going to be F eight because I I've had some good experiences on F eight, and we're going to pull the um, timer down timer down, the shutter speed down, to uh, one sixth of a second, which is long, 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 long. That's too long, actually. And, and seeing what the light was doing earlier, uh, just there, I think if we can go up actually to one fifteenth of a second and see how that goes. 
Just gonna take some more shots now and see how they turn out. In fact, that wasn't bad at all. What I've got in the back of the camera, and you'll be able to see the video that I, I uh, uh, have recorded so you can see the actual composition that I've got, uh, is the hill sort of sweeping down. And I want to see the, the kind of, the, the bits in the background, and I want to see the road as well. Well, in those five shots, I actually got to see all of that, although I did still have uh, some bits that were too dark. Let me just review those images again. Okay, so the first one, the road is fine. And I just want to let's ch check the focus on this as well. Um, focus is good. Actually, focus is really good. Okay. Darker, darker, darker. Okay, so the last shot is... 1 60th, and then it's doing 1 30th, 1 8th, 1 4th. But I think I need to go up to... In fact, I do need to go up a lot higher than that in order to get the, some of the shots that I want. A 60th isn't, isn't bad, but it doesn't give you all of the highlights, and there's still definitely still some uh, sky that I could bring in there. Uh, so I think I need to go a little bit uh, different from that. Currently, it's set on, on 1 15th, um, but if I'm going to take that up to 1 400th, I'm playing around mostly. And one of the great things about this is that you can just play around with these things until the sun goes down. Um, literally, until the sun goes down. So 1 400th of a second uh, to start off with, that means that it should be very dark. Those are really, really quick. And I, I don't have any of the road in that, so that's clearly that's too much. Um, let's try again. And, and so it's somewhere in between, and, and I know that seems like a, a kind of an odd thing to suggest, but if you don't know, you've got to try these things out. Uh, 1 15th, 1 25th, 1 40th, 60th. So I'm going to go with 1 100th. And I'm trying to be a bit careful. It's balanced. I've got the, the tripod balanced on the uh, on the chair. I'll show you the setup in a second. I think we've got it. By Jove, I think I've got it. And the other great thing about this, actually, is that you can then mix in, because I haven't moved the position of the camera, I can mix in bits of the other pictures. So if I wanted something in the foreground, which is a little bit lighter, I've actually got that on another shot. However, um, I'm really pleased with the way that that's turned out. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting back into Lightroom to see this one. I know this is a bit of a shorter video uh, than usual, um, but uh, like I've said before, actually, the, the reason that these are shorter is because of the whole coronavirus thing and because I can't go out for a whole day and spend a whole day spending time looking at a single shot or looking at uh, several shots and doing several different pieces to camera uh, because I've got to record as much of I can, as I can in a really short space of time in case we get locked away. There is a possibility that we're, we're going to be told because I'm in one of those, um, those groups that are, have been told don't go out, don't do anything if you don't have to. Um, and I'm still, yes, I'm still going out and doing things, even though I probably shouldn't. Anyway, one of the things I've tried to show you in the last couple of videos is that if you're stuck in a car, or if you can't go to too many places, if you're just kind of, um, you know, you're, you're limited to what you can get at the side of the road, actually, you've got a fair amount of options for getting something which is pretty good. And hopefully you'll be able to see the images from this. And there's only going to be one image on this uh, uh, on this video, uh, but hopefully the image from this uh, and the other images that you've seen from the previous videos can show you that actually you don't need to be super fit and super healthy, that actually you can still do photography as a job or as, as a hobby. It's not all about being, you know, climbing over mountains and going for sort of five, six mile treks. That's not the way that it works. However, it does help. And sometimes I really wish I'd paid more attention in gym class at school. <laughs> anyway, 
Next thing to do is to get back into uh, Lightroom uh, and to see if I can make anything out of these raw images that you will have seen uh, in the video. This was the final image I got from the road. It took quite a lot of work in Lightroom to blend together everything I wanted, but I'm very pleased with the final shot. But uh, as I was about to pack away, a car stopped at the apex of the road for a minute, and that gave me an idea. So I took my car across to that very same location, and I was able to get this shot. And this was the shot of the day for me. I love the way the light is just caressing that landscape, and of course the colours in the sky are brilliant, and I have to thank nature for that. It did an amazing job. What sets this off for me as well is the inclusion of the sheep in the frame. Luckily they didn't move very much, otherwise they would have been blurred. But as it is, uh, they're a nice in inclusion both for scale and to give the scene more of a natural look. Well, I said this would be a short one, and this is the end of the video, and indeed uh, the last photo trip for a while. But I do have some other shoots planned around the house that should be interesting, so uh, look out for some experiments with smoke or ink or macro photography over the next uh, few weeks. Until then, I will see you for a Lightroom edit next week, and I have another weekly chat and business video coming up in the meantime. So don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell icon so you don't miss out on those. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.